Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. This uh, this episode's gonna be all about reaping rewards. See, that's another pun there because uh, for the most part, I'm gonna be doing a lot of crop hunting in the uh, in in the wilderness, which which of course uh, some of them are fully mature. So we'll be reaping or the it, does that work? That doesn't work, does it? I don't know. Okay, I'll I'll try I'll try better in the next episode. But to start with, um, I'm going to be punching a hole in my wall. Um, not just because my puns are bad, but because um, I wanted a, another hole in my wall. I, I wanted a cellar door. I kind of played with the idea of removing the staircase in um, in our house, in our cottage that leads down to our cellar, and instead having an outdoor, um, basically cellar, cellar door that leads into our cellar. Because I wanted to have something that like you know, better um, reflected real life, you know, and, and these kind of cottage places, they, they tend to have these like outdoor facing like cellar doors, but I, I you know, I don't know. I, I floated the idea, kind of played with it. And instead I, I have now two different staircases that lead into the cellar, which I think will be useful for various reasons, but uh, basically it just makes, um, you know, the, the house, the, the, the cottage a bit more accessible. Um, I think that'll, work out it, it's just gonna make things a bit more convenient i am um here com completely redesigning the cellar um for various reasons one i heard that a, basically a cellar much like the greenhouse can only be seven by seven by seven and so therefore i endeavor to make an actual cellar room um by basically dividing what what is now, what was the cellar into several different rooms this um, ends up not really working out, and I'm not sure why. I'm actually hoping that maybe um, someone in the comments could let me know. Fill me in on what I've done wrong. But, uh, of course, the cellar isn't complete yet, so uh, that'll probably be this full episode and eventually into the end. Um, that's not me trying to trick you into watching my full video, but, you know, uh, I'll, although it'd be, it'd be cool if you did. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> um... But uh, you can see, I mean, I've, I've put the lantern in. I'm going to need more lanterns if I'm going to be doing more rooms like that. They are convenient in that they fill the entire room with light, but um, the segregating or dividing um, the, the house into different rooms means that you, I'm going to need more light sources, unfortunately. Maybe I could get away with oil lamps, but I don't know. Um, so here, this, this took kind of a couple of different revisions but here's our, our staircase that leads outside into, um, you know, basically the, the ground level. And um, I actually fully complete this uh, first design. And then I decide I don't like it because it doesn't line up with the other staircase. Um, which is me being kind of anal retentive about uh, the design of things. That's, you know, when form and function don't both get their fair shake, then I have to, I have to you know, redesign break things down and try again it's a little bit of extra time but eventually my future self will thank me and in this case i had to change it right away i do really appreciate the double doors in vintage store just work and uh, i don't have to do any extra fiddling and i don't have to like open uh, a another like closed door for some reason and uh, again trying to like keep things fairly realistic um, and like rooted in some kind of reality, um, wanted to make sure that the full uh, staircase up was made out of granite. And uh, you'll you may have noticed I made or uh, started making that cellar room out of uh, birch wood. I guess birch has become the theme for the uh, you know under underground or the cellar um, level of the cottage. But I do eventually replace it with granite. Which is really just exciting stuff, don't don't you think? Uh, but yeah, I, here I've I've kind of redesigned it and gone for that kind of archway look, and I do plan on putting the second set of stairs um, over that that leads to the second floor because I do also want to have a outdoor uh, staircase which leads to the second floor. I'm not I'm still not sure if I'm going to have an indoor staircase as well I'll, I'll kind of play with the idea it may be that i have to sacrifice an indoor um, staircase for the sake of uh you know 
having rooms, you know, extra rooms and extra functionality in the main floor. So here I am redesigning the greenhouse with it in mind that uh, the greenhouse uh, needs to be seven by seven. So I am basically designing it to be um, uh, divisible by a seven by seven. So it'll be made up of basically a three by two grid of um, six different uh, greenhouse rooms. And I'll basically finish a room before I start working on another one. So that room functions as a greenhouse before I add on to it. This makes for a pretty nice modular system that allows me to make use of the greenhouse before I finish it, which is kind of nice. But, uh, you know, it's still going to be a lot of work. Um, but, you know, like kind of um, sketching things out in a way uh, helps a lot for me to figure out the design of things, figure out how much space things are going to take up, and uh, ultimately kind of you know, figure out how I want my whole area set up and not just like my warehouse or what it is a warehouse right now, my cottage, but also like my whole area because it, it is um, eventually going to be made up of multiple elements, including, you know, a windmill, including, a, you know, the greenhouse, maybe multiple greenhouses for with different kind of crops. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that needs covering. So uh, a lot of room is necessary. But uh, we're making some more tools, need some more shovels, another shovel. I, I got too used to having an actual copper shovel. They kind of burn up real quickly, but the convenience of, of them is impossible to, you know, come back from. I can't use flint shovels anymore. It's got to be, got to be copper. Or it would be nice to have like an iron one or, you know, a bronze one, but never mind. So uh, at a certain point, I take notice that our juice is going to spoil pretty soon some of it i can drink uh some of it i decide instead to seal so that it will be preserved for longer and i've reconverted our pit kilns under in our cellar room back into uh what what it was meant to be which was an actual like cellar for the sake of preservation one room will be dedicated to juice and wines and maybe brandies in the future and then one room was dedicated to uh, pretty much everything else, including flowers and doughs and uh, vegetables, fruits, meats, you know, who knows. Whatever I can put on visible display, I will, and then anything else will probably end up in a uh, jar, and uh, I'll, I'll have more jars in the future. But I drink what I can and start putting the barrels in the second room, which will function uh, I don't know about sinking the barrels. I've seen um, I, I've seen other people do that, and I like it in function. I don't like it in form. So that uh, that that you know, they both have to have a have a representation. You know. So here, um, I don't know if someone wanted to see what it looks like when you stand in a little temporal spot. If I stand there long enough, I eventually get teleported to the rust world. Um, I may do that eventually, but I don't want to do it until I have some armor and some proper weapons probably be in the Bronze Age. So it won't be for quite a while, but I figured someone would be interested in what that looks like. Um, you know, sorry, sorry I'm not a bit more bold about these things. So here you can see I'm uh, dividing this, you know, large rectangle into multiple small rooms. And when I have some more uh, dirt, you know, the the... I'm just using the normal crappy dirt, the, the kind of like low fertilization dirt to uh, grid things out. And then uh, I'm getting pretty close to having that compost. So I should be able to make the high fertility dirt to fill in those grids. But here you can see my farm uh, was no longer functioning and we are officially in winter. I mean, we have been for a while, things have been getting colder, but now everything's covered in a layer of snow. so. Hence the change in the thumbnail. I don't know who takes note of these things, but I appreciate you. I appreciate you for for doing so. But um, finally, starting to lay down some of that uh, road. What is it? Stone path that I've been making. I've been accumulating, and I actually didn't realize up until this very moment that the stone path actually serves a function. It isn't just for aesthetics. That it actually speeds you up by point three. Uh, 0.30 percent 
I guess just 30%, it, it, it makes you walk faster, which is a really, really nice little touch. Um, I don't, I, kind of unnecessary, but I, I appreciate it. I don't know if I like have any other places I want to build a road to, um, but I will certainly put road down uh, around my my cottage and um, you know in various places that need it. I may actually replace the low fertility. No, that doesn't make sense. I was gonna say the low fertility dirt with road in the uh, greenhouse so that you know I can walk quickly. But those will have walls on them. Um, so it doesn't actually make too much sense. Honestly, it doesn't really make much sense to uh, have dirt there either. It should be granite if I'm trying to be realistic and create some actual kind of foundation, but never mind. We're, we're just going to use dirt for now to sketch things out. There's another, another day has passed and we're making some more dough so we can make some more pies. And um, I had kind of a weird... Like, I don't know if maybe time, uh, you know, the days are shorter, but I'm, uh, I bumped into a weird thing where, like, I kept waking up in basically the middle of the night instead of the next day. So I started venturing. Oh, yeah, this is great. That that wolf there was chasing down a rabbit and then made a 90 degree hairpin turn in order to chase me down instead. And I was really not impressed with that. Uh, despite it being a totally fair thing for the wolf to chase down a bigger meal. But, yeah, I was not excited about that. Um, but, yeah, I keep waking up in the middle of the night, and I, like, venture out to do my, you know, thing. And uh, and I realize it's, like, it's still dark out, and it was still it's still dark out for another couple of hours. So, in-game hours, I should say. The nice thing about this wolf um, is, for once, I got my own on the wolf and, and didn't take any damage and got some fat for my, you know, for my trouble. So that was actually kind of a rare example of a nice encounter with a wolf. I, uh, I feel absolutely nothing when I kill. I always feel bad when I kill like a raccoon or a rabbit or even a fox. But when I kill the, the wolf every time, it's just like, yes, good. I hate you. Um... So this was kind of a interesting encounter. Um, so this is already the merchant I, you've seen once before uh, that I've, I have been using to buy some clothing, but I didn't expect to do as much business with them as I do here. Um, but as I said, this episode is all about reaping rewards, not just the crops around this area. This, and this place was very rich with interesting crops, including carrots, which is a new find. And I'm pretty excited to start planting those, but also this. Which is interesting. A, in that cavern, if you uh, can see that, there's kind of a weird, out of place, almost a dungeon-y style brick. And I really didn't know what to make of it, but I definitely knew I wanted to check it out. And I'm glad I did, because in here there's some really really cool stuff um all of those like gears are like I, I i end up breaking them all and they all gave me quite a few gears each so that was like a huge chunk of currency which was really nice and that decorated pot was something i could pick up it's not not damaged all of the other ones were cracked so um basically they're all little treasure troves of extra goodies but um, getting that decorated pot was actually really cool because uh, now I have like this neat decorated pot in my cellar and I am going to use it for food. But um, it's just like a nice find, you know, like it's, it's kind of cool that you can find stuff like that. This flax was a big deal. And actually, uh, you know, like in, in addition to all of these extra rewards um, is the bonus of I actually finally kind of have enough flax to start working on some of the big stuff uh, in this episode i actually uh, end up with enough resources to start working on the windmill so that's a big deal i really didn't think that, that i was gonna be able to do that for quite a long time and i wouldn't say it's necessary i mean there are definitely other things i could be working on but i don't know the windmill just feels like this huge milestone I'm working towards. And it, it gives me a reason to also build up the cottage and not just have that one main floor, have a second floor, have have a roof. You know, like it's 
it's kind of like vintage stories version of building a a rocket ship you know like it's this big thing you kind of want to work towards i know that the devs are like maybe planning on having like steampunk tech in the future and some like really crazy wild stuff which is really exciting to hear about but honestly something as simple and as primitive as the windmill and i know it's you know, ultimately it's not really that primitive in the grand scheme of things the windmill is kind of a masterpiece of engineering but something as simple as that compared to um so many like high-tech things in other games feels like such a crazy accomplishment every part of it requires um, fat which means you, you have to you know probably get into animal husbandry as well as make a chisel which means that you have to be an accomplished metal worker or smither um you know you have to obviously get some wood but like also the sails need to be made from linen so that means you have to have a very like high functioning uh farm with lots of flax growing so like just every part of it needs to really like takes full advantage of the resources uh and and demands that you have all your you know ducks in a row as an, an accomplished farmer a resource gatherer a uh, a smither and a you know like a metal worker like it's it's seriously just a really big deal and i'm really excited for that so making you know having um acquired enough flax to start working on it to get the first piece in place was a really cool feeling and uh again leads to my my uh, obsession with this game really it has become kind of an obsession. I love it. But in the meantime, um, we're still doing medial things because that's also what this game is about, uh, including making pies. And honestly, the first time I made a pie, it was it just the same level of accomplishment as anything else. It was like, hey, I, I was like, you know, banging rocks together not so long ago, and now I am like making a pie. And it's not awful like that's kind of a big deal and uh oh yeah i forgot about this as i'm making pies i'm hearing wonderful things like wolves outside <laughs> my door i don't know why there was a, a wolf outside my door and i don't know if it like found my cottage or followed me back on one of my ventures but man that was an unpleasant surprise um and a bunch of drifters but you know, I'm just kind of like, never mind. I'm gonna work on my pies here. Don't don't mind me. Um, I decided to try and improve my kitchen a little bit. I saw that someone, uh, like, you know, I I follow um, a few vintage story players, and they all have kind of fun little design tricks for uh, you know making the place feel a bit more pleasant. And the really really simple thing is just elevating your oven by one block. So that you can um, put the oven at like eye level. It's a really simple thing, but it means that you don't have to like look at your pies at this angle or your bread, and uh, you have a you know better angle at just kind of like keeping an eye and making sure they don't burn. It's a simple thing, but it does a lot. And uh, small things like that, I hope to incorporate throughout the entire design of the uh, cottage. And hopefully I <clears throat> I do want the, the kitchen to feel like a kitchen and even look like one as well with like adorned with full decorations. But, you know, as is tradition in all of my uh, pie making uh, ventures, I have to ruin at least one pie and you can see me do it in real time here as I uh, am distracted by other things, including a wolf. And I unfortunately burn one of these pies charred charred turnip pie i appreciate the fact that the charred pies are still good they 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 still give you quite a lot of calories and uh so you know i don't i don't mind too much i'm not too burned up by that uh no, i didn't mean that to, well never mind yes i totally meant that pun there you go um yeah isn't this great having that wolf just like salivating for my body just outside my door hate that here i have decided uh, i i should make some something some actual warm clothing so i've um, decided to use one of my fat um lumps of fats in order to 
uh, cure one of my... Oh, I always get this wrong. Is it now hide into a pelt in order to have enough for gloves? So, and here I am using the other, uh, some more lump uh, of fat. I actually was just experimenting to see if it would use up the lump of fat. It makes sense that it does, but also it'd be kind of nice if it didn't. But, you know, then again, if it didn't, then the lumps of fat would be, um, you know, far more renewable, I suppose. And I'd keep, I'd have a reason to keep one lump of fat at, on hand at all times because, I, hey, I can go ahead and make as many windmill parts as I need with this one lump of fat. So I suppose it makes sense that you do use it up. Part of me was hoping, though. That I didn't, uh, I didn't have to, you know, basically kill an army of wolves or whatever animals uh, use in order to get the, the lumps of fat necessary to build a windmill. It is weird how these things work, you know. Um, so you may have missed it. I mean, I uh, found that interesting kind of dungeon shack. I don't know what to call it. I called it kind of a dungeon, but it really is just like a like a human lived in kind of shack. And um, I couldn't find it on the map. I thought I went west, but I actually went east. And uh, eventually, like, you know, I, 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 went, I went west a lot of times, at least two or three times thinking, oh, that's the direction I went in. But I just kind of got lost. And I'm, my map is starting to get kind of cluttered with a lot of pinned things for this, this and this and that and, and the other. And uh, so it's a little bit hard to find some of the stuff. I do plan uh, at maybe in my next session to actually sit down and, and come up with some good macros so I have better pins on the map, you know, for, you know, it's like, oh, I found copper or I found a tree or I found a merchant that is worth, you know, keep, keeping track of. And that way I'll have like better pins on the map. Um, I did, that was walnut I walked by. I did mark one at the, on the map that there's some walnut wood that I wouldn't mind taking, uh, making use of. I found some quartz there. Coming up is a really strange event. I don't know if it's like right now or soon, but there's this really interesting event where like a kind of a little micro temporal storm kind of erupts. But here I finally realize I'm in the wrong spot and I'm heading the wrong spot. So hold on, I'm gonna stay quiet for, oh yeah, bees. I found bees, that was actually a big deal. Um, so I might start to try and put an apiary together. Yeah, right here. I don't know if you saw it, but for a moment, like, this weird temporal storm kind of, like, came out of nowhere, and my gear was spinning, and all these drifters kind of, like, all spawned. I don't know if maybe it's because I was in the dark for too long, if something like that happens, but that was a little bit disconcerting. Like, I was just, like, it felt like for a moment I was almost getting thrown into the rust world, and everything kind of went wobbly for a moment. But I wasn't able to collect everything from this dungeon because my inventory was predictably very full of crops and seeds and stuff. So I had to go home and empty my pockets and then come back so I can collect everything. I kind of want to go back again to like break this whole thing down for um, interesting parts. Like the walls are, are actually a really neat uh, resource or like collection of materials that I've I, I don't know how to make necessarily so that'd be kind of nice to collect you may have seen it there uh, I got some black coal which is uh cool like I I actually can't collect black coal right now so the fact that I was able to find some is kind of a big deal as well although I don't know how big a deal and then that crate is like filled with bee nades and <laughs> I, uh, I attempted to throw a bee nade down the cave and messed up, but enjoy this moment. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to throw the bee nade and instead hit the wall, and then I get, you know, I get attacked by this angry but hilarious sound effect. I just thought that was so good. And the bee sound really is just like simultaneously f hilarious and like kind of cute. Like this little swarm of voxels is just like chasing you down and it makes this little hark sound. And I don't know, there's something really endearing to me about that. It's hilarious. Um, but hey, yeah, like uh, never mind the bee nades. The fact that we found bees kind of, kind of, a 
big deal because I can actually start to work on an apiary and maybe um, I will have a renewable source of beeswax, which would be great because then that's the major bottleneck for making lanterns. I'll be able to make a bunch of lanterns and I would, I would throw a lot of copper at that in order to make a bunch of lanterns. But uh, still, still more crops and resources in this area. And I've kind of gotten over the idea of trying to wait for them to become mature and instead just break, break them down right away. Because there's a good like 50% chance of you getting seeds for that. And it doesn't matter if you don't get the seeds because there's plenty of crops. And, uh, you know, it just doesn't matter. You'll get some, you'll get it next time. Like it's no big deal if you lose a couple of seeds. But you can see there, there's like the amount of seeds I've got collected for our greenhouse is kind of absurd and uh, I should be good and ready to um, plant a bunch of different crops once I actually have the greenhouse built, set up, or at least started. So that's pretty exciting. And here I've put together the rest of the flax into twine and I'm putting the rest of the twine into linen and I, I guess I needed something to eat there. I'm not sure why I included that footage. But we have sails for our windmill, four of them. You get four sails for your four linen and um, I guess nah, six sticks. So uh, this is a really hefty price. I mean, linen is hard to come by. It's hard, pretty expensive material when you consider that it's four flax um, to make one twine and then four twine to make one linen. That means to make one linen, it's 16 flax. Anyway, um, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.